So, here it is. My coveted review of Cat. Oh boy, where do I even start? Well, I guess the best place to start is to explain why I got the game in the first place. So if you watched my last video, then you know I had acquired $10 from leftover funds. I spent $7.50 on Hollow Knight since it was on sale. So I looked for a game that was $2 or under to spend the rest of my money on. But there are a lot of games on the Switch that go for under $2. Like for a rough estimate, 2,500 games are under $2. And I didn't do any research beforehand because I thought that it'd be cool to go into a game completely blind. Obviously I couldn't look at all the games, but amongst some of my final contenders were Squidlet, The Rusty Sword, and, of course, Cat. What made me choose Cat amongst the other options? Well, I like cats. And as someone who's an avid fan of more retro style games, the graphics looked really nice. So I chose it and bought it. I purposely didn't look into the game, not even the reviews, so as to be utterly surprised to what I was going to play. And I'll go ahead and say now that I was utterly surprised by what I found. Let me just show you the opening to this game, and y'all can make your own first impressions before I start telling you my opinion of it. I'll save my comments in a bit, but now here's the opening cutscene to the game. So, when I first saw this, I thought the game had froze, and I'd be unable to play the game. But no, this is just the loading screen. No progress bar or spinning wheel or nothing. That isn't even to mention the story, if it can even be called a story, giving literally no information. Now, I'm a fan of Mario, so I'm no stranger to stories that aren't very fleshed out, but at least in Mario, you get an idea of your goal for the game, to save the princess. It gives you a reason for doing all the things you do and going through each level. But what's the goal in this game? You follow, like, a spirit wisp into a box and then just teleport to a different plane of reality? Is the goal to escape back to the home from the beginning? Defeat the very obviously evil wisp? It doesn't explain it. There's no reason to do anything in this game outside of just playing it. And no, to my knowledge, it doesn't explain it later in the game. But maybe that's just the intro. Who knows? It's a pretty common phrase to not judge a book by its cover. So. In the gameplay itself, I'll start by acknowledging some of the good about the game. For one, as I've already mentioned, the graphics are amazing. I really love the look of this game. It's what attracted me to it in the first place. It's stylized in the way only a retro style game can be, and it's appealing, at least to me. Number two is that it does give you a tutorial style area when you first start to help you get used to the controls of the game in a safe environment, which is good game design and I won't knock it for that. But beyond those two things, that's, that's it. Very few things you will hear in the rest of this video will be positive things. I'll try and remain respectful because I do believe that there are people behind this game that probably worked really hard on it, and it would be unfair to judge them based off of their creation, even if it's not good. But still, respectfully, I do not like this game. <sighs> Anyway, at the end of this tutorial bit, we see a portal that takes you to the game proper. Now, there's a total of six or seven areas, I never bothered to count, uh, for you to tra traverse between, with the portals being your way between them. But to get to these portals, you have to walk through a glorified maze. These little goofballs, or poofles as I'm going to call them because that's funny, will attempt to impede your progress by murdering our cat protagonist. But don't worry, because this little fella has more than the nine lives that a cat normally would. Cat, trademarked, has as many lives as it takes for you to give up this fruitless endeavor of a game and go outside to touch grass. These poofles can be taken out by a hearty stomp, a la Mario, and literally explode into flagrant bits of poofle dust. Other obstacles include rusty saws and lava, because why not? As the game progresses, the frequency of poofles grows until it's like a mess of poofles. Genuinely, it's like the developers started spamming Control-V on the poofles in the later stages. Like, what? what is this? 
Some of the poofle placements don't even make sense. You will frequently see a poor poofle stuck in a wall or poofles stuck in a pit of lava. How did the poofles get there and what threat are they supposed to show? The lava will kill you long before the poofles will. Oh, and you might have noticed already, but this game has a checkpoint system. But alas, this is a broken system. Checkpoints aren't handed out at specific safe spots like you might expect, but instead are given out somewhat randomly. I believe it's based off of your horizontal position, but then again, it's not that because I've had different checkpoints at different places in different playthroughs. So you just gotta hope that a checkpoint will spawn in whenever you get a little farther away from the checkpoint. These randomly assigned checkpoints are a real problem sometimes too, because sometimes your checkpoint will spawn over a rusty saw and you'll die immediately upon respawning a couple times till you're able to jump out of the way. I was actually able to get into a soft lock because of this save system. Yeah, this? You see this? This is how my first playthrough ended. But here's the real kicker. The developers of the game seem to know that the system is bunk because they give you immunity to poofles upon respawning until you move. If you don't move, the poofles will be the one to die on contact to you. Which shows the developers know that the checkpoint system can lead to horrible spawn points. Although, for some reason, they didn't extend this invulnerability to lava or rusty saws. I've complained about the checkpoints long enough at this point. They're actually one of my two biggest grievances with the game. My other biggest grievance is with the portal, believe it or not. So as you probably know, my favorite part about mazes is finding all the dead ends until you find the way out. But you know what would make that experience even better? Having some of the exits you find be trap exits that actually take you back to earlier parts of the maze. Yeah, the thing that's probably the most infuriating about this game is the fact that they make portals that will take you to an earlier part of the stage, sometimes even to previous stages if the devs are feeling heinous enough, or even two stages back in the case of the portal that's right next to the final boss. I don't know why they thought adding these fake portals would be a fun addition. There's no difference between the traps and the real portals, by the way. And that's the thing, if there was a difference, like the trap portals were a different color, then it's at least a reasonable obstacle. If I didn't notice the difference, it'd be on me for falling for it. I still wouldn't like it, but at least it would feel somewhat fair. But no, it's just the same looking portal that could either send you to the next area or take away some progress in the game. It's like it's actively disincentivizing you from playing the game. It's the most frustrating thing about the game in my opinion. The best advice I can give to you if you decide to get this game, which I have no idea why you would, is that the exit portal is probably not the first one you see. It's usually pretty far into the stage. Also, while moving through each stage, there are these gems you can find. They act as the main and only collectible. But as with the story itself, the game gives no reason why you should collect these gems. They're just some random out of your way collectible to pad this game's content, I guess. Which I guess would be fine on its own, but there are some like hidden er gems inside boxes, but I have no idea what their deal is or how to get them. I have played this game through two times and probably a third by the time this video goes up for footage purposes, yet I still don't know how you're supposed to collect these or even if you're supposed to collect them. I don't know because the game doesn't explain it. But this all might be a moot point because it honestly doesn't even seem to change anything. There is no reward for collecting the gems. The main collectible has no purpose for being collected. And now I think it's time to talk about the ending of this game. So if you want to avoid spoilers for whatever reason, go ahead and head to the timestamp marked on screen. So first up, the final boss battle. I was honestly extremely surprised when I finally got to the end of this mind numbing maze and saw the boss. This is the only boss in the game and the only time the gameplay varies. Your job for this fight is to jump on the boss a whole bunch of times until he dies. The same way you'd kill a poofle. The boss can't even kill you. It's the poofles around his throne room that pose a threat. More of a threat than the final boss himself. And his movement pattern, I'm not even gonna call it an attack pattern because he doesn't attack, it's just the exact same spaz out and then return to the middle. So once you get rid of the poofles, you can just jump repeatedly in the same spot and kill the boss and not get distracted by this portal that sends you back two stages like I did the first time around. The boss was the most anticlimactic thing ever, but I'm glad it, there wasn't at least another maze. And then he just turns into this angel with gems surrounding it? I have no idea what's going on because nothing is ever explained! 
If you all in the comments have any idea of what's happening, I welcome the suggestions. Anyway, your reward for beating the game is honestly about what I expected. You get to freely explore the room from the opening cutscene. Quite frankly, I'm not even mad about this. It, it's the kind of reward that's fitting for this level of emotional involvement I had in this game, which is close to none. I do find the Easter eggs on the shelf pretty fun, but that's about it. There's not even credits. Like, the game developers themselves are too embarrassed to attach their name to this game. And that's where this game ends. If you close out and come back in, you cannot continue and must start a new game. So what's the moral of the story here? Learn about games before you buy them, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this game. It's boring at best and incomprehensibly frustrating at worst. I guess I can rate it on a scale from 1 to 10 just because this is a review, so uh, I'll give it a 2. Eh, no, I'll give it a 3 because the, the graphics are. I do enjoy the graphics. But there you have it. Cat in all its glory. It's not even worth the $2 price tag, much less the $10 they expect you to pay, which how could this game even be conceivably close to worth $10? Like, if a friend made this game and he was learning game design, I would be impressed. But for an actual company that decided to publish this game for money, it's almost embarrassing. <sighs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I actually enjoyed ragging on it more than I actually did playing it, so maybe that says something about the game. But regardless, hopefully this was enjoyable to watch. Uh, maybe this informed your decision if you were thinking about buying Cat for yourself. So yeah, don't buy Cat basically is what I'm saying. Hope you enjoyed. Bye! <laughs>